Okay, uh, so Kant is a pretty easy thinker, at least uh, when you when you summarize him, uh, when he's talking about the foundation for ethics. What is it that all, if we abstract from all ethical actions, what's behind it? Dignity, respect for persons, right? He thinks most of the teachings of Jesus are just trying to get us to realize this idea that all human beings have value and intrinsic worth. That can never be lost, by the way, okay? He thinks all human beings, no matter what they do, insofar as they have humanity or uh, free will, if you will, uh, freedom, rationality, they're dignified, no matter what they do. Okay, so all of Kant's uh, morality is founded on this axiomatic assumption, this metaphysical axiomatic assumption. And remember, it's not, you can't find it in the empiric world. It has to be assumed, and it's metaphysical. It's, it's, it's spiritual, if you will. Um, and so that summarizes his, his, his philosophy in a certain sense. But, and Kant has an interesting inference he draws from this. He says that if you, if you think that morality exists, that is, if you think the human being or human dignity exists, and if you think human beings have dignity and worth and personhood and value and we should respect them, then once you're, you're already in the metaphysical world. In other words, if you think dignity exists, which I'm, I'm assuming you do, if you think that human beings really have worth, objectively out there, not subjectively, it's not just something we make up, but that it's really real. If you think that, you're already in the metaphysical world, and you're already into the bounds, you're into the, into the area or the realm of religion. And he thinks that with the moral law comes this idea that God exists, that if you think, uh, uh, if you think morality exists, then you think human dignity exists. And if you think human dignity exists, then you think the metaphysical world exists. And if you think the metaphysical world exists, then you think God exists to some extent. Think about it. What sense would it mean to say that there's something like dignity out there? It's not, you're already in the area of religion. And so Kant thinks that morality necessarily assumes the idea of God, okay? And think about it, because why are we dignified? What would, why would we be dignified if there weren't a being to confer dignity upon us? Or there weren't a, dig, a, a being to, to uh, explain this metaphysical reality, okay? Um, and so Kant, in a certain sense, is is like Plato in the sense that you know he thinks there is a metaphysical, there are metaphysical realities, and that metaphysical reality is human dignity and morality, and that's what founds uh, morals and ethics, and that's what grounds it. But once you're in that realm, you you're in the realm of theology and religion. You're in the realm of of God, and so he thinks morality. Uh, assumes the existence of God to some extent. He thinks the idea of human dignity and the idea of human worth, if you believe in that, then you believe in God to a certain extent. And so this is sometimes, this, this uh, is called the moral argument for the existence of God, which says that, look, if you think objective morality, objective moral values and duty ex duties exist, then you, th then you, in a certain sense, have to believe in God because without those things, you can't have, uh, or excuse me, without God, you can't have those things. Now, I'd be interested, uh, I know probably the knee-jerk reaction that most of you have is, well, you can still have morality without God. You can certainly be moral. Kant's not saying you can't be moral without the idea of God, but he's talking about rash, to be rationally consistent. What do you, what, how do you explain a realm of objective moral values and duties uh, or a, a realm of, of a metaphysical concept like personhood and, and value and worth and dignity without getting into theology. So he's not saying that you can't be good without God. That's not what he's saying. He's saying you can't be rationally consistent. And those are two things people confuse, okay? Uh, if, you are a, if you are a scientific reductionist and you think there are only si empirical realities and physical realities and science explains everything, how do you explain human dignity? You'd have to either say, well, we just make it up and it's not really there and human beings aren't really dignified. Or you'd have to say, well, there is a metaphysical realm that human dignity occupies, okay? So what Kant is saying is that once you admit that latter point, that there's a metaphysical reality or realm that dignity occupies, you're in the realm of religion, you're in the realm of theology. And this is why morality and religion have always gone together for the, for, throughout human history.